What's patrolling my borders? I'm Robert Evans, host of Behind the Bastards. This is Behind the Bastards, the podcast where we tell you bad people, talk about them. Katie Stoll, Cody Johnson, how are you guys doing Hi. today? Still great. Uh, quick answer to your question. Racists are patrolling your borders. <laughs> yes, yes, they are. <laughs> Whether or not they're in Border Patrol, actually. Doesn't matter, doesn't <laughs> yeah, pretty, matter. Pretty much pretty Official much or not, racists does not matter. <laughs> from the top down. Um, boy, you know... Uh, Sure seems like 2020 is going to be the worst year of everyone's life. The worst year ever? Can't the agree worst more. year ever. Yeah. Well, I could I could agree more, but I'll just agree. What if I'll we, just agree with you completely. What, mm-hmm. what if we what if we what if we spitball in here? Mm-hmm. What yeah. if we produced a weekly podcast through the entirety of the election talking hmm. about the stuff people are leaving out? Going to oh. places other people don't go. Like to the conventions. And yeah, stuff? yeah, avoiding mentioning you know Specific the president yeah, yeah. so much He's like talking about too talking much, about yeah. policies policies and, and important things people left behind uh-huh maybe injecting methamphetamine into our butts and going to CPAC oh god mm. yeah what if we, what if we did that <laughs> would be a dream come true <laughs> you, you think we should do that i think uh, i think we should do it yeah, on the spot uh sure okay cool you know what i what i what i love doing and what's super professional That's is up. holding holding Pitch meetings like this uh, uh-huh. at the start of my show. Before, <laughs> yeah. before but, you know, that's where the magic the happens. That that's is where the magic it, that's happens. That's how it does, you know. Um, and, and we're actually legally forbidden from talking, not on microphones mm-hmm. to each other. Yeah. So right, right. This is the only place we mm-hmm. can have this. I've had, I've had mine implanted. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Which very cool move. <laughs> Everything's recorded. Check out our other podcast. Just catching up with each other as friends. <laughs> yeah, catching up. We have to record. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, my my nighttime sleeping snore sounds is really taken off. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I I think the Cody and I discuss our sciatica episode uh, was mm-hmm. a real. Was it's a real. real it's real good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've got some good stretches for you guys. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That that's the uh, <laughs> yeah. title of another episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I guess we're doing I, that. Is, I guess. that uh, is that our our soft way of saying we're going to do that? We're going to do a, a weekly podcast about the election mm-hmm. about Called the, the worst, worst year, year of everyone's yeah. life. Yeah. Get ready, guys. Get, yes, it's going to happen. Check it out. Check it out. Uh, not yet. A little yet, bit later this not year. Not now. But no, 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 for the next not year. Not even particularly close to now. But, but, but like sometime soon-ish, in August. Soonish, yeah. we look forward to. Sometime in the uh, Q3-ish. Yeah. Maybe Q4. Sharing the worst year of everybody's life with you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hooray, that sounds great. You know what else sounds great is. I doubt. Our, you, what? The Products? surely <laughs> crippling. <laughs> oh, I was going to say the surely crippling addictions <laughs> that we will inculcate covering this nightmare of an election. Or are they going to be worse than my already existing addictions? They, I, they have to be. Oh, okay. um, I've already All checked right. myself into rehab uh, for December 2020. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And I've, I've already started asking random guys under bridges if they have Adderall. So this Great. is, this okay. is, we're well, all... I've got Adderall. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Oh, so, man. Yeah, yeah. We are Cut so off, yeah. on the ball. Look at this. Look at this team. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> and I've been stockpiling Benzedrine inhalers. You just pop those things out, drop them in your water, and that's just, that's Beautiful. some 70 speed right mm-hmm. there. Professional. Yep. Doing it right. CPAC. Sophie, you're giving me some sort of hand signal. What does I that mean? I think it means scoop it up. Name more drugs. Oh, we have a we have a show to do that people tuned in wanting to hear more about the racists of the border. I guess we could okay. read the show. Fine. I you guess know we what? Read the Fine. Show. Mm-hmm. Fine. Chris Simcox was the first person to tap effectively into a very particular chunk of the American conservative consciousness. People had tried to run volunteer border militias before, and there had been militias for decades, but no one had managed to make that sort of behavior go mainstream, because all the prior leaders of those sorts of movements had been insane people, outright Nazis, or insane outright Nazis. Chris Simcox was a clean-cut, all-American-looking guy. Mm. He helped the militia movement go mainstream. Here's the nation. Quote. Thank you, Cody. <laughs> As the Republican Party has fractured over immigration, Simcox has become a hero of the build a wall, deport them all faction of the GOP. Oh. Earlier this year, he shed his camouflage fatigues for a suit and tie as a featured panelist at the Conservative Political Action yeah. Conference in Washington, D.C., the nation's largest gathering of conservative political activists. An increasing portion of his time is spent at fundraisers and forums far away from the border he once swore to defend by any means necessary. Chris had enough charisma to be able to effectively work a crowd. That Nation article recounts a speech he gave during a Republican Party fundraiser at Wild Bills, a nightclub in Atlanta. I want you to remember, as I read this, that it happened all the way back in 2006. The odor of pulled pork spread a mighty tang as members of Georgians for Immigration Reduction hawked t-shirts bearing the image of a snarling bald eagle above the slogan, 
ill eagles foul up my country. One fucking guess <laughs> how foul this spells. Oh, wow. I, I desperately want one of those shirts. <laughs> I will wear it every day. I That's bet. what I'll wear to CPAC. I'm yeah, sure we yeah, can yeah, find yeah, them yes. on yeah. the internet. You have to wear that at CPAC. <laughs> well, oh, will, my God. I will wear it for the four days before CPAC, so it's like filthy. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. then we'll shoot methamphetamine into our butts there and go is. to CPAC. Right. It's okay. going to be amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Oh, I'm going to have so many lanyards by then. <laughs> I'm so oh, excited. It's so good. All right. It's all Cody can talk about. I'm excited about all the lanyards. The crowd warmed up for Sim- Simcox by listening to the Wright Brothers, a country rock duo built as the Sean Hannity show put to music. <gasps> what? <laughs> that's their that's their billing? That's what they go by? Be their music. I thought I'd not even go through the paragraph. What? That's not a description. That I'm looking said. them up. I'm not even through the paragraph and there's tears in my oh. eyes. What? <laughs> We're still talking about the Wright Brothers. Good. One donned a black sombrero with gold tassels and dedicated a song called The Illegals to Chris Simcox. The not-so-catchy chorus? <laughs> Tell me why do we allow the illegals? After all, they're illegal, so why do we allow the illegals to keep on coming in? Oh, you no. You can't rhyme illegal with illegal. <laughs> oh, that's so bad. Oh, my gosh. Sean like... Hannity show put to music. Right. <laughs> What an insane that's, thing. That's so perfect because, like, it's it's so bad in so many ways because, like, obviously the message is like, well, that's not good. That's Sean Hannity's show. But then, like, rhyming illegals with illegals, like, <laughs> it's so inelegant. It's like, oh, yeah, the other aspect of Sean Hannity yeah. is that he's really dumb and inelegant. <laughs> oh, They're really oh, embracing it. fucking incredible. Oh, amazing. As the music faded, Simcox strolled onto stage to raucous cheers. America's top vigilante spoke slowly and with a hint of condescension, almost as if addressing a room full of five-year-olds. Mm. When you put people in lawn chairs on the border, an amazing thing happens, Simcox said. <laughs> no one comes across. <laughs> as he spoke, giant screens behind him displayed ghostly night vision images of immigrants marching through the desert, water jugs piled beneath a mesquite tree, and the decomposing corpses of desert crossers. <sighs> what? what the fudge? Sounds like he's a cool guy. Very cool dude. Very it cool. sounds like he is a guy. Yeah. You know how you see all those videos of like migrants crossing the border and they go yes. to the border patrol and uh, they're uh, dying, um, yeah. dehydrated, and then you see the border patrol agents uh, take jugs of water and pour them out in front of the... Sounds like something nice people do. Okay. Cool people. Okay. Yeah, I just, wanted to, I just wanted to make sure you... Okay. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah, I mean, there, we 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 should at some point do an episode on the the terrible things the border patrol is the done. actual but border it's like patrol. Just, right, there's right. like there's yeah. a lot to talk about with the, yeah. the vigilantes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Stay focused, Cody. Stay I focused, think guys. This, they just sound Keep your similar. Fucking sound, head on a swivel, Cody. Similar, are you? I'm sorry. Jesus okay, Christ. Okay, okay. Jesus Christ. Right. Now, as the early aughts rolled along, Chris Simcox became more controversial within his group. Many accused him of taking donations to finance his own lifestyle. He earned the nickname The Little Prince for, allegedly, being a complete prick and control freak. <laughs> I was say, for being a little French boy on a moon. <laughs> a little fancy boy. A little oh, fancy a little boy. Fancy a little Nazi on the Roy on the, on the Je border. Je suis le petit prince. <laughs> yeah, a little, little Lord Fuhrer Roy. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very, well, mm, not, not it's really, okay. actually. It's, it's a little forced. Mediocre. Sure. We'll make a t-shirt out of it. Obviously, yeah. yeah of course, yeah. we'll make a t-shirt. But yeah. I'm not going to throw the bagels over that. I understand. Which right now, since I've mentioned them, like, I don't know if you've heard of, of Chekhov's gun, but they're, they're Chekhov's calling bagels. for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <absolutely>. yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, as a result, the Minutemen splintered more and more. This was not entirely a bad thing. More than 50 different groups eventually formed all around the U.S., <laughs> and for years they held regular border patrolling events. Most of these were on the U.S.-Mexico border, but Chris's Minutemen chapter did send a few guys up to the Canadian border to sit in lawn chairs and watch for dastardly Canadian infiltrators. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think the only people they caught were Americans trying to sneak into Canada. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> At its peak, the Minutemen Project had more than 12,000 members, and that was just in the main official group. Gilchrist and Simcox remained the primary faces of the movement, but starting in 2006, they began to share the stage with someone else, a 41-year-old woman named Shauna Ford. Okay. Y'all heard of Shauna Ford? No. You're fucking about to. Is she a Ford, or is she just a person named Ford? No, no, no. She's not at all related to the the motor company. Mm -hmm. It's spelled different, too. There's an E at the end. Oh. 
Ford's first operation was actually one of the watches on the U.S.-Canada border, which was close to her home at the time, Bellingham, Washington. After the watch, she wound up at a party at the home of Bob Dameron, the Washington State Minutemen leader. While everyone was eating dinner, she was caught alone in the Dameron's bedroom, looking through a dresser for pain pills. She was kicked out of the house, but allowed to remain in the group. This was because Shauna was kind of a superstar Minuteman, or woman, or whatever whatever term you want to use. Minute person. Yeah, yeah minute person. person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She showed up at every event, and she was the kind of person who just sort of dominated any conversation she was in, in such a way that within a few weeks, she'd become one of the most prominent members of the group. She was especially active on the Minutemen email list, The Line. According to the Herald, a local Washingtonian news source, quote, In a lengthy August 20th, 2006 email, she described being attacked by a group of men. She said they were Mexicans outside of a Seattle Starbucks. The men were enraged after seeing signs against immigration piled inside her car. Ford wrote about finding herself face-to-face with a pair of dark brown eyes filled with pure hate. Uh... One man, she wrote, wanted to rape me or kill me, probably both. Just before the confrontation got physical, though, Ford said she was saved by a group of U.S. Army soldiers in full <laughs> uniform who happened to be in the area. Did everybody clap? After? I'm sure they all clapped. <laughs> like... I, I'll say in a little bit of defense to her, I have seen a lot of U.S. Army soldiers in full uniform in, well, U.S. Navy in Seattle during Fleet Week, but they were all so drunk they couldn't stand and trying to fuck everything that moved, Fleet week. as Marines and Navy yeah. personnel do. So she may yeah. be like got her signals crossed and like misinterpreted what they were showing up for yeah yeah i mean i this is all a lie i know it's 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 clearly a lie yeah i mean i feel like yeah because i'm gonna guess like seattle's racial makeup being it what it is like any group of hispanics in that like city are probably like members of the u.s military who are as you you were saying that i was like i bet someone with brown eyes one person saw her sign and was like hey man that's not cool i I bet she was shouting about it and she was shouting and someone was like that's you're a bad person. And then a bunch of horny sailors came up and was like, hey, Anybody lady. here to fuck? <laughs> you know, that's, that's the grain of truth I got from that. Yeah. Is uh, uh, literally anything bothering you right now? <laughs> Is, uh, I know what'll make you feel better. Because I'm drunk as fuck and it's Fleet Week. Oh, that's a fun time. Mm. Oh, it's time for ads also. <laughs> Maybe ads for the Navy. <laughs> that was the Sean Hannity of transitions yeah. to ads. <laughs> anyway, it's ads time. Join the Navy. Get drunk in Seattle. Uh-huh. We're back. Mm-hmm. We were just we were just talking uh, off off mic about uh, cool political ideals we have uh, <laughs> yeah. that you could hear about on the hypothetical podcast that's definitely coming. Like if soon. we if we definitely probably are we're, gonna for sure do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, we'll definitely most likely mm-hmm. absolutely be talking about what we just talked about. Yep, and you guys can tune in then. Yeah, it was yeah. weird that it wasn't recorded. It was weird that it wasn't right. recorded. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyhow. Let's talk First about Shauna <laughs> Ford some more. Awesome. Ford with so, me. <clears throat> yeah. Um, Shauna became quickly the Minutemen's de facto spokeswoman, regularly talking to press on behalf of the organization. This did not go over super well with all of the actual leadership of the group, who felt that Shauna was basically just shouting her way into power. Gilchrist, Simcox, and the organization's other leadership got together and voted to fire her. Bob Dameron was instructed to actually do the deed in November of 2006, after she finished participating in a local television town council discussion on illegal immigration. Dameron later recalled, I told her I was told to fire her. I also told her I couldn't do it. Shaken, Ford drove home, or she tried to, but she rammed a guardrail in her Honda Civic and was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. <laughs> this much we can confirm. The Washington State Patrol said she crashed when a truck, which was obeying all of the l- rules of the road, pulled in front of her. Uh, the State Patrol seems to put the blame on her for driving like a shithead. But in Ford's recitation of events, the truck drivers ran her off the road, and of course, <laughs> they were Mexicans. <laughs> Yeah, she's, she's, yeah. yeah. Can I we, love uh, a person that can't take responsibility for themselves. <laughs> it's cool, especially when they become part of a heavily armed militia. That's mm-hmm. the best thing. Those are the best kinds of responsible people. Was she trying to end it all? I don't know. I think she was trying to have a minor car accident so she could claim Mexicans were trying to murder her. Yeah. Right. Is there any way to confirm likely. or deny that those the drivers were Mexican? He did, no, none at all. Mm. Yeah. I'll deny it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say. I was hoping ha- someone would. S- 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 driving 40 or 50,000 miles a year as I do. Especially up in the Pacific Northwest, mm. I don't see a lot of truck drivers who aren't old white dudes. Mm. But she seems to run into them all. Yeah, she does seem to run mm-hmm. into them all. 
This attempt on her life was enough to delay <laughs> Ford's firing. In January 2007, she took the opportunity to approach Chris Simcox directly. She told him that her state's Minutemen group leaders were shitty and disorganized. She said she could do better, and she had a whole plan laid out for how to fix things. Simcox promoted her to a state-level leadership position. Shauna took to leadership like a dog takes to a fajita that fell on the floor. She quickly came up with new stories of assassination attempts against her, including the claim that she had been shot in the arm during another attack by dastardly villains of vaguely Hispanic origin. She told anyone who'd listened that she fully expected to die for the cause. All this impressed Jim Gilchrist. In early 2008, he made her the Minuteman Project's Border Patrol Coordinator. She moved to Arizona and started her own independent Minuteman group called Minutemen Against American Defense when she was kicked out of the original Minuteman group shortly after moving down to Arizona for being a crazy person. Gilchrist sent her volunteers, though, calling her one tough lady, and soon she had around 20 armed volunteers at her beck and call in her own personal little Minuteman militia. Ford began to claim that she'd started an undercover operation to infiltrate drug dealers on the border. Gilchrist started to worry that she was going to get murdered, which seems to have been her goal. Throughout 2008, Shauna Ford took to calling Kathy Dameron, Bob's wife, at all hours of the day and night, claiming that her life was in danger and shadowy figures were hunting her. Shauna would regularly cut the call suddenly, just to make things seem even scarier. I'm going to say real quick, she seems like a toxic friend that you don't want to have in your life. Sure like does. Like a real energy drain. <laughs> yeah. I think people would be well served to just cut that tie. Mm-hmm. Move on. Anyway, yes. that's some editorializing. <laughs> In November 2008, Ford emailed Kathy photos of drugs and money she claimed to have found at an Arizona stash house. The photos solidified her reputation to other Minutemen. Shauna Ford was out there fighting the real war on the border. This image was buoyed when her ex-husband was shot by an intruder in their Everett, Arizona home that December. The case is still unsolved. And the next week, Shauna went to the police and claimed that a Latino gang had raped her. That case was eventually dropped due to a lack of evidence. In January, Ford called Kathy and, in mid-call, claimed to have suddenly been shot. Kathy did not hear any gunfire over the line. What the? F- Why is so much what gun violence in this? <laughs> so much fake gun. Oh my violence. God! Like in an one real one. The yeah. What happened fake. to her, her husband? We, we don't lived? know. Yeah, 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 he's fine. He was fine. <clears throat> like I mean, he she, lived. Did she, did she shoot her husband? I don't know. Did, he shot himself. It seems like something. Seems like maybe she shot her husband and they called the cops. I mean, home invasions do happen, but like, yeah, yeah just, just given everything else, it seems like it might have been. Like sur- I mean, she's literally made everything else up. So. Exactly. Yeah. So that phone call, which was super sketchy, and the fact that Shauna stole Kathy's pain pills whenever she visited, mm-hmm. made the Dameron slowly stop trusting her. <laughs> Dameron <laughs> sounds like a pill that she would take. Yeah, it does. Sorry, I mean, Dimerol is fucking awesome. Yeah. Um, here's how Kathy relates Shauna reacting when she got caught, pill-handed. She said, <laughs> I've been busted, haven't I? I said, yes, you have. She said, I'm sorry, Mom. I said, not good enough. So, <laughs> sorry, mom. Yeah, I think that was like her like nickname, or she was it's being very like, weird trying this to act like a kid. Yeah, I'm disturbed she... by this relationship. <laughs> You're about to be disturbed, her. Uh... In February 2008, the Herald published an article revealing that Shauna had a history of childhood felonies. They went to Jim Gilchrist for comment. His initial response was actually pretty reasonable, saying he respected her for turning her life around. And then he said this. She is no whiner. She is a stoic struggler who has chosen to put country, community, and yearning for a civilized society ahead of avarice and self-glorifying ego. Mm -hmm. In 2009, stoic struggler Shauna Ford cooked up a plan. She had identified someone she believed to be a drug dealer in Aravaca, a small border town. Shauna reasoned that this monster was getting drugs from Mexico. Mm -hmm. If she robbed him and took his drugs and money, she could use them to fund the expansion of her border militia. Solid g- galaxy brain plan <laughs> right there. And she could Stop use the drugs. drugs. And she could probably take the drugs. Because <laughs> she'd ran out of the, her friend's pills. Yeah, yeah. You know what it, stops drug dealers? Robbing them. <laughs> that's the one thing that's, they're not then, ready uh, for. Then they're like, ah, oh, I'm out. I'm okay. done. Yeah, that's it. We've all seen Breaking Bad. <laughs> My God. <laughs> In mid-May, Shauna traveled to Colorado to recruit, to recruit a few good men to help her carry out the scheme. Here's how Tucson.com describes what happened next. At that meeting in a truck stop near Denver, Ford drew a map. It wasn't specific, pointing to an individual house, but it gave a generic impression of the area she meant to hit. Ron Wido and Robert Copley, two of the men she was recruiting, kept the map and handed it over to Chris Anderson, an FBI agent in Colorado for whom they were acting as informants. This is where the bureaucratic problems happened. Anderson said he passed the information to the FBI in Phoenix. The FBI in Phoenix apparently did nothing. Eventually, it even destroyed the map. 
On May 30th, 2009, Shauna Ford and two of her militiamen showed up after midnight at the home of Raul Flores, Gina Gonzalez, and their nine-year-old daughter, Brasenia. Shauna and her men posed as border patrol officers. They accused Flores of harboring illegal immigrants and told him his house was surrounded. Flores let them in, thinking they were cops. Shauna believed that Raul was a drug dealer, so she started combing his home for drugs and cash. There was only one problem. Raul was not a drug smuggler. His house had nothing valuable in it. So Shauna and her men stole Gina's jewelry. Then they executed Raul Flores with a gunshot to the chest. They shot his wife next, three times, and, while she begged for her life, they blew nine-year-old Brasenia's head off. Now, Gina survived the gunshots and played dead until Shauna and her men left. Then she got up, called 911, and grabbed her husband's shotgun. For some reason, Shauna and her people re-entered, probably planning to search another part of the house for drugs. Gina opened fire, wounding one of the gunmen and causing them all to run like the gutless shit stains they were. Cool. Wow, that yep. really upset yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. It, that, it's the it's. I mean, it's the only logical extent of what these people are doing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, we didn't yep. find what we need. I'm going to kill you. Yeah. The uh, the the big bar in Aravaca, like the the. <clears throat> the center of this little town like has signs that like specifically say no militia like yeah. no border patrol yeah. like fake w- people are allowed in the bar like we we, we we don't want any of this fucking bullshit anymore it's like there's a uh, for all, all the stuff we talked about there's yeah. like a logical progression and it's that, like uh, the people they claim to be protecting who live on the border <clears throat> actually despise all the people doing this because yeah. they just bring trouble and they're yeah. like dis- undisciplined violent nuts yeah, yeah. Shauna and her compatriots were all convicted of murder Shauna was sentenced to death in 2011 Gina also sued the FBI for having clear evidence that Shauna Ford planned to violently attack people and doing nothing with it. The Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals ruled that she had no grounds to sue for this. According to Tucson.com, the argument that really stuck was that under the Federal Tort Claims Act, the federal government can't be sued over the exercise or performance or failure to exercise or perform a discretionary function or duty. The decision of whether or not to notify local law enforcement was a discretionary act, she said in her decision. They're not required to let law enforcement know that someone's planning a violent break-in of a house sounds in like their a area. Bad, so they can't be policy. Yes, it sounds like a terrible policy. Yeah, what if they were allowed to do that? What if they were required to tell local law enforcement when a nut with a militia is talking about attacking people's homes and drawing maps well, of where she plans to hit? I don't have the names of these the current militia situation going on the names of people so i'm talking generally but the leader oh we'll get to that we'll get to that okay yeah. i'll save it then but it ties in with this sorry that's okay okay it's okay in 2010 the year before shauna's trial chris simcox ran for senate here's a, you know, a little picture of chris simcox get the fuck out of here chris simcox i trust that guy you trust him yeah He was attacked from the right for his seemingly moderate views on illegal immigrants. Chris had started to support adding in new pathways for citizenship to make immigration easier for people fleeing desperate circumstances with whom he claimed to sympathize. Mm. He was also attacked for the MCDC's financial irregularities, chief among them the fact that hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe millions of dollars, had probably been funneled directly into his pocket in spite of the fact that he officially drew no salary. Mm. Weirdly, what wasn't a huge issue was that, as early as 2005, the Southern Poverty Law Center had reported that Simcox's first ex-wife had accused him of trying to sexually molest their 14-year-old daughter. Not long after that, his second ex-wife accused him of violent, abusive behavior. She testified in court that... He once took a knife from the kitchen and threatened to kill himself. When he was angry, he broke furniture, car windows. He banged his head against the wall repeatedly and punched things. Simcox repeatedly, vehemently denied all allegations. He continued to do so right up until the moment, in June of 2013, he was arrested on multiple counts of molesting and raping several of his own daughters. Here's the Phoenix New Times. Quote, Two of the daughters who took the stand are under the age of 10. Both are his children with ex-wife Alina Simcox. One of them alleges sexual abuse. The third daughter is an adult, his child from a previous marriage, who alleges that Simcox molested her on three separate occasions when she was young. I'm so angry. (laughs) Cool dude, Chris Simcox! Patriot! Uh, uh, Yeah. Yep. This is the part where I don't... I don't, know, I don't know what to say. Yeah, what, what is there to say? It's so upsetting. It's so gross. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to go into detail about what Chris did, other than to say that this border patrol and clean-shaven conservative patriot repeatedly sexually assaulted his own daughters. In 2016, he was sentenced to 19 and a half years in prison. Mm. Should have been 40. Mm. Should have been 40. With Shauna convicted of murder and Chris convicted of serial child molestation, Jim Kilchrist was left at the, as the only Minuteman leader not in prison for committing numerous horrific crimes. Mm. 
And he's still active. A 2016 Vice article caught up with Gilchrist. He told them he takes credit for the conservative obsession with border control that metastasized into the presidency of Donald Trump and his wall. Jim also resurrected the Minutemen back in 2014 after his co-founder was arrested for being a pedophile. So the Minutemen are still a presence in American political discourse. That said, time has largely moved past them. And we're going to talk about what time has moved on Mm, towards. But Mm. first we're going to talk about products. What else though? Services. And you know what? I forgot to do this. but I'm going to toss a goddamn bagel. I'm 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 going to act on my anger over the crimes of Chris Simcox and Shauna Ford. By tossing a bagel. Good on you for moving those drinks. <laughs> My beverage and is I'm, out of the I'm way. I'm not even going to look at where I toss it, so this could be real bad. <laughs> no, they just came right back. It was almost perfect. I, that was a back. blind throw. You proud of me, Sophie? Sophie's proud of me. Mm-hmm. You know what else is proud of me? The sponsors of this show. Products! We're back! <laughs> what? We were having a conversation, then I interrupted it by saying we're back. It was, it was getting a, too tense. It was real abrupt. An, yeah. an act of cruelty to our, our, our engineer, Daniel, who's done nothing but be helpful to me. And bash Taylor Swift. And bash so. Taylor Swift. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have these bagels, and I've been tossing them. We have these sound boards on the wall that, yep. uh, that act to bounce sound around somehow. Uh-huh. I don't understand what they're for. I've been tossing them mostly, which is why it's been bouncing back to me, mm-hmm. which makes sense. But we also have on the end of this recording studio, for reasons that are inexplicable to me, a glass door <laughs> leading out to a porch. Which is not standard in most recording studios. Mm, mm, I'm going to try chucking them as hard as I can at the glass door just to see what happens. Please don't. No, it's happening, Sophie. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, oh! Satisfying sound. That was a good sound. This is going to be great on the podcast. Content. Sophie, Listen, you look ashamed. Listen, they love him around here. He can do what he wants. <laughs> Oh, he's got his gas in there. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> he's yes. trying to kill all of us. Yes, the, uh, the people who built that, like, soundproof that porch, mm-hmm. sealed it with toxic chemicals and didn't let it off. Yeah, and just want to make sure you don't open that the door. The one yeah. thing we're not allowed to do is throw bagels at that door. So the door to the, like, walled-off porch in our recording studio is filled with poison. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a great studio. Yeah, it keeps you on your toes. I don't understand the problem. I might throw him again. Yeah. What do you mean, might? Well, you know, Anderson, <laughs> fear is Anderson. the mind killer. The little death that causes me to throw bagels. I think that's how it was that's written. The, in, yeah. yeah, that's the, it was from Dune, right? Yeah. That's how it goes. <laughs> Big bagel fan, Frank Herbert. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. Bagel Harkonnen. Right. Yes, we'll keep on to this afterwards. <laughs> so, as I said, time has moved past the Minutemen, but their influence echoes in much of what's going on right now at the border. In May of 2018, Michael Meyer, founder of a militia called Veterans on Patrol, mm-hmm. posted a video of himself walking through a homeless encampment in Tucson. Like Chris Simcox, Michael gave the government an ultimatum. They had until noon tomorrow to investigate the site. According to BuzzFeed, quote, He then turned the camera around towards a tree with straps attached to it, declaring, this is a rape tree. What? (laughs) Meyer painted a grim picture. The straps on the tree were not used to secure parts of a makeshift homeless encampment. Instead, there were restraints for holding children in place while they were sexually abused by cartel members, he claimed. The space dug into the ground was, in fact, a prison cell for the children, and various other items of trash and debris at the site proved to Meyer that sick shit had been going on there. This is a child sex trafficking camp that no one wants to talk about, that no one wants to do anything about, he said. What is it? Where does he get his information? Well, weirdos. I'm about to get into where he gets his information. The video quickly racked up hundreds of thousands of views, and Meyer's claims were even repeated by a number of local news stations. Infowars and other similar conspiracy outlets were happy to run with the tale, and it mm. quickly got woven into the broader Pizzagate QAnon family of conspiracies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the idea of rape trees did not start with Meyer. Here's a video child murderer Shauna Ford posted in 2009. Uh. Yeah. Sean Foe. There's a coyote who uses this very specific trail. This is his territory. He brings his people through here, and they'll pick out who they want out of the group. They'll bring them to a separate location. They will rape them. They will rip their underwear off and take their bras off. They make them leave them behind, and then they throw them on trees. It's a trophy. 
women do not leave their garments laying around. Most women, come on girls, we all know that we tuck them and put them away somewhere. We're not just going to throw them out. It doesn't matter if you're out in the middle of the wilderness or not. Uh, women tend to be very modest with their undergarments. So what a traditional layup site is, is backpacks, clothing changes, uh, just all kinds of items. Here, no backpacks, no male items, nothing that's a traditional layup. So this is a genuine rape tree in a genuine rape spot. Rape trees. Are rape trees historically a thing? <laughs> no, no. I mean, outside not. of uh, True Detective no, season one. Her evidence is that women tend to be modest. Yeah. That's your evidence that's the that evidence. it's that's a the rape evidence. tree? That's you their child fucking... murderer and disciple of a pedophile? Yes. I take my bra off and leave it places whenever I can. Ditto. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. These weirdos. <laughs> these fucking these gross I think, weirdos. I think the word weirdos. you're looking for is psychopath. These Thank people, you, Katie. They, you're there's such a bizarre cross section of mm -hmm. this like obsession with like there's like a, a, a kid sex cult going mm -hmm. on. Also, there's the immigrant thing, yeah. but also it's like a kid sex and cult also, thing. And also, the government is in on it. And I'm gonna molest my own kids. Also, I'm molest my own kids. I'm probably gonna like <laughs> yeah. be a child murderer. I'm gonna murder a bunch of people. But like these people, <laughs> these are, people, yeah, it's a uh, sick. Cults of yes. sex. Weird. Shana Ford, God. who ordered the execution style murder of a nine year old, mm -hmm. worried about rape trees. Yeah. According to Harold Shapira, author of a book about vigilante border patrols, quote, for the Minutemen, the rape trees are a powerful symbol of the Mexican male's immorality and simultaneously imbue their own actions with valor. By patrolling the border, the volunteers are not just defending America, but women, and not just American women, but all women, even the ones who are illegal. Until they shoot him in the head. Until they, until they try to execute them. Mm. But because she's a badass, she fends them off with a shotgun, which is... I'm so yeah. sad for her. I'm sick she, for it's her. It's terrible. It's, an, it's the worst thing that can possibly happen. And then like, they can't yeah. even do the suit that she tried to bring. No. To the, her. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry. It, unbelievably infuriating and terrible. Yeah. Yeah. In October of 2017, the FBI public access line received reports of militia activity in Flora Vista, New Mexico. According to a government complaint, which okay. I initially found shared by activist Emily Gorchinsky on Twitter, quote, In October 2017, the FBI public access line, PAL, received reports of alleged militia extremist activity in Flora Vista, New Mexico. Information was conveyed relating to a group that called itself the United Constitutional Patriots, located at Lakeside Ranch Trailer Park in Flora Vista, New Mexico. The United Constitutional Patriots was led by their so-called commander, Larry Hopkins, who also went by the alias of Johnny Horton Jr. Information was also conveyed that the group had its base at Hopkins' residence, was supported by approximately 20 members, and was armed with AK-47 rifles and other firearms. Witnesses reported seeing members of the United Constitutional Patriots bearing firearms at Hopkins' residence. Hopkins also allegedly made the statement that the United Constitutional Patriots were training to assassinate George Soros, Hillary Clinton, and Barack Obama because of these individuals' support of Antifa. Mm -hmm. Yep. <clears throat> cool. This story kills me. Now, when you find evidence that a convicted felon yeah. uh, lives in a house with multiple firearms... A convicted felon that impersonated... Yeah, a police, a police officer, officer, just like the people who murdered that nine-year-old and yep. that innocent man. Um, when you when you hear about that, mm -hmm. that these people illegally have guns and are planning to murder a former president, a former secretary of state, uh, a random private person, and presumably some Antifa people, what, what would you what would you guess law enforcement would do? Uh, nothing, literally nothing. I think in this situation, <laughs> they'd walk away for a couple years or a year and a half, some change, yep. and then come back. Last week and arrest him because they posted some videos online and everybody got upset. Yeah, kind of like how they threw away that map to where Shauna Ford was yeah. planning to rob and murder people. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. The FBI just kind of moved on with their I, lives and forgot I about it. I cannot believe left this. It, left this felon with weapons and stuff. So, But cool. it comes back to this thing. So the FBI doesn't necessarily have to report this no, to law it's at, enforcement. It's at, their, it's at their discretion. It's at their, their discretion. discretion. But this was okay because something that I'd read is like, he was like, no, no, these guns, they all belong to my mm -hmm. common law wife. Yeah, he did say that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's okay. Okay, that, that makes like, it okay. Is okay, it... then let's make that no, a law. Actually, yeah. <laughs> like, you just can't have guns in the house. Yeah, if uh, you're a convicted felon who pretends to be a police officer Ooh. and is yeah, and is now a vigilante. So they 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 saw the videos were getting traction and then they. Yeah, yeah. Almost two years later, in April of 2019, pictures and video went viral of a group of heavily armed American militiamen with AR-15s, body armor, and skull print balaclavas stopping a group of 200 migrants at the border and holding them until police arrived. 
These men were part of United Constitutional Patriots. Their leader was Larry Hopkins. Hopkins claimed that they had detained 5,600 people in the last two months. The video of their arrests went viral, and it seems to have finally prompted the FBI to do something about Larry Hopkins and his illegal guns. They arrested him a few days later after the video went viral. This is his mugshot, and I, it's, look at that. Oh, yeah. Look at uh, that, look it, at that mugshot. It mug is shot. so beautiful. It's quite, quite the mugshot. I, That's like a, We talked about it briefly on the podcast yeah. this week, and I just didn't know how to describe it. He looks like a convicted felon who would probably murder and rape people. He's like some he sort of like washed up country singer. Looks like but he's at a grocery store at 10 a.m. in Vegas. Yeah. He, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's really good, Cody. He, he looks that's like, good. yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. But his eyes will never open for more than that ever no, again. No, He He looks like who you would cast if you needed someone to play a drunk 70-year-old Elvis. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's a bad picture. It's a down in his picture. luck Elvis impersonator. Yeah. Yeah. And they chose the nicest picture. Yeah, they, ch- they chose a good one. Yeah. It's for the press photo. So Larry is at least behind bars for a little while. But less than a week before the recording of this episode, something else happened. Behind the barsters. Sorry, go ahead. Thank you. (laughs) Sorry. Russell Pierce, a former member of the Arizona State Senate, spoke at a patriotism over socialism rally in Gilbert, Arizona. He shared the stage with Laura Loomer and spoke about the border crisis, noting that it may take the shedding of blood to keep this republic, and I, for one, am willing to do whatever it takes. In their coverage of his remarks, Fox News noted, it was not clear what Pierce, now an employee at the Maricopa County Treasurer, was speaking about. <laughs> was it not? Mm. I think I may have an idea. Mm. <laughs> He's talking about doing what Shauna Ford did. Hard, also, hard to parse Laura words, Loomer, yeah. come on, Fucking bottom Laura of the barrel. Loomer. Do an episode on her. Fucking, no, she doesn't. She, she doesn't deserve it. She yeah. doesn't deserve it. I mean, okay. these people deserve it, but... Uh... I mean, Simcox she, yeah. definitely is a bastard. So Shauna Ford. Mm. So I said this before you started recording, but I do appreciate a female bastard. Thank you. Because, uh, like I said before the recording that you guys weren't here for, mm-hmm. I I do think it's sexist our knee jerk re- reaction, like or our thought that like oh women are are better than men. No, mm-hmm. women can suck. Women, women, women can, can suck yeah. too. Mm-hmm. Thank women you, can Katie. suck balls. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they can also. I mean, that's not. Bad or that's good. not necessarily that's an amoral that's, position. Yeah, that's yeah. Nu- that's a neutral. <laughs> Some, sometimes I was good. using it yeah. in yeah. a way neutral good. It's yeah. that <laughs> has nothing to do with sex. Yeah, I was not. But yeah, I, I see I'm, that. I can't look at one pump one. It's cream right and there. Bagel. It's right in front of you. Tossing yeah. bagels, you know, it's, it's semen. Yeah. Oh, oh, I get it now. <laughs> oh do you get it? Whoa. Whoa. I thought it was purely about coffee, mate. No, <laughs> one. I could see why you'd think that. I get it. Um, you probably have to cut this out. One stroke, one cum. I get it now. Right. <laughs> no, we can say cum on the show. Okay, good. I mean, we I'm, I'm hoping stroke. to get on to cum town. I still don't know what cum town is. Never going to listen matter. to an episode. Yeah. Great no. title. And, and the cum boys. That's mm-hmm. funny. Yeah. That makes me giggle. Don't know what it is. Don't plan to listen. Don't need to know. What I do plan to do is toss these bagels, bagels one last time. Now, where, not Sophie, but where do the people who aren't <laughs> Sophie want me to toss this that I haven't yet? Sophie. S- <laughs> Sophie. No, I'm not going to throw Don't it up throw the roof. Sophie. Oh, the roof. That's a good idea. Because anything can happen. Oh, my God. The roof. There's, there's drinks. There's computers. Oh, this is good. The, roo- the roof is made yeah! of glass, by oh, the way. Oh, it was good. Oh, uh, they fell behind me. Oh. I was hoping it was going to do some damage, but no. you, or live, at least you live by the bagel. The next person that mm-hmm. walks on that glass ceiling. Walking there is a glass walk- ceiling. Yeah, there's a glass ceiling. <laughs> and it freaks me out. There's a glass out. ceiling above the poison room <laughs> in our recording studio. <laughs> this is where I want to be when the big one hits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right, right between the glass ceiling and the poison room. Yeah. yeah. I all can't right. believe all of that's true and none of it's a joke. <laughs> You're going to need to tweet some room. pictures of all of these places so people understand what we're talking about. <laughs> There's a poison room. Oh, just God. Don't just, open it. Don't find out. A, don't amazing. find out why. So, you guys want to plug your pluggables? Yeah, we got a podcast called Even More News. You my, got a podcast? We yeah. do. Oh. Even More News. Even More News. Um, and my name's Katie Stoll on Twitter and in life. Mm-hmm. Cody, take it away. We also have a video series on YouTube called Some More News. And that Twitter account is Some More News. And my Twitter account is Dr. Mr. Cody. That's D R M I S T E R C O D Y. D Y. And I forget my name, uh, but this podcast has a Twitter and an Instagram, at Bastards Pod. It has a website, BehindTheBastards.com. I don't think there's anything else to plug. Sophie's not saying I should plug anything else. 
Well, there's this uh, this show that we're Daniel probably is do. gesturing to his mm-hmm. shirt. You can buy Daniel's shirt if you find him on Twitter. Um, mm-hmm. He'll sell anything. PayPal, anything. Venmo, <laughs> Cash any, App, any, anything. anything. You can also buy shirts on tpublic.com, buying the bastards. Is there anything else? Uh, Sophie has a dog named Anderson, uh, who you probably cannot buy. Um, probably not. Yeah. Adorable, but you could though. you could approach her about buying the dog if you approach us on Twitter, because she runs the Twitter, because I am not allowed to run the Twitter. Um, <laughs> and good. should under no good. circumstances yeah, be allowed no, to Yeah, no, we don't Twitter. need you doing that. Uh, we don't need you being tweeted, hey, can I buy that dog? And you saying yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so like we're Sophie's not, not going to have that. <laughs> well, that's the episode. Go... What? What are you? What are you looking at? What's it could happen here? What could happen here? Oh, I have a podcast. <laughs> yeah, I have a podcast and a a dream of exasperating Sophie by <laughs> pretending I'm not going to mention it to make her frustrated because I'm just a piece of shit. I'm just a uh, bad working. person. It's working. It's working. <laughs> Cody's enjoying it. That's the audience uh, I play for. <laughs> All right, play me out, Daniel. <laughs> 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 <laughs>